All right, guys, it's time we talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs and their 2022-23 season that was, and then we'll chat about their 23-24 upcoming season that's about to get underway in you know, almost a month. Uh, so we'll start off with the recap straight into it. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs finished fourth overall in the NHL standings with 111 points and 50 wins. They were second in the Atlantic, which is insane to think that they were fourth overall in the in the whole league, um, but they still managed to finish second in their division. Uh, it just shows how good of a season Boston had. Um, overall, Toronto had a, I think it was a, a little bit of a slow start. Um, however, they, they picked it up pretty quickly and, and took off from there and never really looked in doubt of or in any sorts, really. They pretty much had playoffs. Um, they were playoffs bound pretty pretty quickly and it was pretty, I think, probably even before the um, the trade deadline or even the um, NHL All-Stars break, they kind of knew that they were going to come off against the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. I think both of them put the cues in the rack and just went, well... Doesn't matter if you have four games at home or we have four games at home. Either way, we're playing each other. Um, so it was a pretty lackluster sort of end to the season for probably both of them. Uh, however, Toronto Maple Leafs did come up against the Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. And for the first time in a long time, and the death of the first round loss, playoff loss memes happened. Toronto Maple Leafs beat the Tampa Bay Lightning in six. Um, it was a fantastic day for Toronto fans, sad day for the league, given that those memes will no longer live on. Um, however, the second round loss memes started to kick around the league uh, as the Toronto Maple Leafs lost to the Florida Pan in five games. And unfortunately, like what a lot of people started to think after they got out of the first round, a Stanley Cup berth was not to be. Um, so unfortunately, it all came crashing down in the second round. But hey, they got the first round voodoo off their back. Uh, now they've just got to get that second round off. That's it for the recap. Um, and now I'll hand on over to Jaden for the 2023-24 projected lineups. All right, sweet. A lot to go through here, so I'll rifle it off. So just basically three million over the salary cap still, so moves to be made. Um, Ten point three million in dead cap due to LTIR with uh, Muzzin and Murray. Uh, onto their list, you got Bertuzzi, Matthews, Amana, Domi, Tavares, and Eilander. As per now, if he, um, he hasn't been traded yet. Young Croak, Camp, and Lafferty, Knees, Holmberg and Reeves. So that rounds out the starting lineup, depending if Nealander gets traded or not. I doubt he does, but that is what it is. Uh, defenders, Riley, Brody, <laughs> sounds like the same name, uh, McCabe, Klingberg, Giordano, and Lilligren. Uh, goalies, Samsonov and Wall, and and you could probably add Murray, Murray there if he does come back. Um, those out indefinitely. Scratches, you got Gambrell, Timmins, Jones, obviously the other uh, goalie they brought in, and Beno. Notable losses, it's a long list here, so I'll just rifle them off. <laughs> you got, you got a Achari, mm -hmm. Bunting, Gustafsson, Hull, Hollowell, Kalgren, Kerfoot, Mete, O'Reilly, Shen, Zohorna, Aston Reese, Ben, Simmons, players who take pay cuts, signed through Matthew's contract, and first round player lost memes signed by Tampa Bay Lightning in the first round. So, some <laughs> big notable losses there, especially at the end. Um, yeah, so, and they've only really brought in, what, five um, or four, really, players uh, that are playing on the actual roster at the moment, Bertuzzi, Domi, Reeves, and Klingberg, and Gamb Gambrell and Jones being in those scratching situations. Uh, considering how much they've lost. Obviously, they're relying on Knees to step up, Holmberg to play more games, um, you know, Wall, Wall to step up. He only played seven games, though they were great seven games. The .932 save percentage. Um, it's always good, but a very limited amount of uh, games to be sampled there. And obviously, they just re-signed Samsonov for one more year as well. 
So, 10.3 mil in LTIR with Muzzin and Murray. Um, they're still over the cap. I don't, I don't know how they're going to work it and keep a fully competitive roster because um, I don't see where they can cut besides Nealander um, if you're going to get rid of anyone from the Corp War because of all the NT no move clauses from the other ones and you obviously just signed Matthews to the big contract um, for your extension at 13.25 mil highlighted in green there UFA to 2028 taking him to what was it 31 um, make of it what you will I think it's a horrible contract but make it what you will but yeah let me know what you think Nick on this roster um, can they do it can they get past round two now uh, is Sheldon Keefe the man? Is Tree Living the GM? He's done some pretty ordinary trades in the past. And Sheldon Keefe, though, he has a good stats record. He's only really done it with this same roster with Toronto. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's getting a little bit worrying for, for the Toronto Maple Leafs, if I'm, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, you know, you look at those notable losses, albeit that, you know, majority of them were bought in you know, at the trade deadline. Um, yeah, there's probably a couple of players that's there. That's another thing I didn't mention. They sold a ton to bring in that for the mm -hmm. go all out last year and all the board of Yeah, like and, and look, it, <laughs> hey, hey, that they got the first round playoff hoodoo off their back. I, I don't know, if, <laughs> uh, you know, anyone else, but that's that's almost worth it. Um, yeah, look, I, I th think for, for a lot of Toronto fans and probably the Toronto organization, they, they probably felt once they got past the first round that it was going to go a lot further than that. So it probably wasn't a, a big disappointment um, to come crashing down. Like you've just gotten that burden off of your shoulders and you're thinking, finally, we're past it. I was one of them. I thought once Toronto got past the first line, uh, first round, I, I, I truly did think that they were going to be a good uh, shot at um, making a Stanley Cup berth or at least going to the um, Eastern Conference Finals because it was one of those things where it just, like, as soon as they won that play at first round playoff, I thought, well, that's weight lifted off their shoulders. Um, they might start playing a bit freer, but it just wasn't meant to be. It, worked. it just didn't come to fruition. But, um, yeah, it does start to concern me now with this team because we know the salary cap's going up. Yes, however, Austin Matthews has just taken a $1.6 million pay increase on an already inflated salary. Um, you know, his $11.6 million salary, I don't think... It, it, it was far too much, and he's just taken an increase on it. They didn't even get term. It's only four years. So, you know, if he if he's still playing relatively good hockey and, and what he's do, doing now, there's no reason he's not going to ask for 15, 16 mil come his next contract. Well, that's the thing. Uh, you've trying to maximise his money, right? So he'll probably ask for well, eight, exactly. eight, eight, eight years at that point as well. But that, well that's, that's uh, if you give him eight years at... Oh, I, I have no doubt. Um, but if you give him eight years at 31 years of age for that kind of money, you're just an idiot. Um, the other issue comes that the, the Nylander situation. You, you've got to re-sign him. Well, you, you could lose him for free or trade him out. But, you know, he put up 40 goals last last season, 34 goals the season before, 80 points. So he's been a point per game the last two seasons as well. Um, on a $6.9 million contract, when you've got contracts like uh, Matthews, 11.6 for what he's been doing um, with the upgrade to 13.25, 10.9 for Mana, uh, 11 for Tavares. Tavares, where um, Nylander hasn't been that far off of, of what they've been doing. So, yeah, is it, is it wrong for Nylander to be asking for 10 mil? Probably well, not. It, it's, um, it's not. It's but but, but you, give, you give Nylander a $10 million contract, you've got Mitch Marner coming up next season. He's going to get a, he's going to probably get a pay increase, especially with the likes of Matthews. Um, getting what he got. Tavares, Tavares won't... Yeah, Tavares shouldn't get a pay increase. Um, I dare say he will, his, his contract will go down. It should, given his age and everything else. However, I don't think that's 
going to pay for Nylander, Mana, and Matthews. I still think you're going to have a, a large chunk of your cap taken up with those three players. So, yeah, it does. It gets a bit concerning, especially because, you know, the, the players they brought in this year, Batuzzi, Domi, Reeves, Klingberg, they're all one years. Um, yeah, well, besides Reeves. Because, you know, I know, I know Batuzzi's looking to, to, to show that he's worth a long-term contract at good money. Um, that was one of the reasons he took the five and a half. Um, he, he, wants to, he wants to try and maximize his next contract. But yeah, like I look at this team and I go, yep, they're probably going to make the playoffs. That's that's pretty much almost a given with the the firepower they've got. Um, but do I see them getting much further than the first or second round? Not really. I just I don't feel like they're a stronger team this season going into this season than they were last season. Um, like you know, they obviously season. had a lot of losses. Yeah, yeah, they that's did. Crazy. Like they were the second in power play, and that's behind Oilers, who are just freakish. Twelfth in PK, mm. ninth for goals for, mm-hmm. uh, six for goals against. So they're actually like very decent. Like they're better than average on all the marks. Then you look at Vegas, who we just covered, mm-hmm. and they're better in stats on all of them. So like they have the stats there. I just don't think they're actually a team that wants to win. Um, I think I think Matthews is leading the way on the just maximizing money. And that's what it feels like now. Well, you've got to ask that question, right? Like, what what impact does Matthew's mentality have? Mm. You know, yeah. we, we said, yeah. I, I, the, the thing I didn't like about this contract is he said that he wants to stay in Toronto because he's enjoying it. He wants to win in Toronto and he wants to help them do that. Signing a 4 by 135 million dollar contract isn't helping no. Toronto win anything. Yeah, That's yourself. just hindering them. I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, like you're now the you are now the highest paid player in the NHL, and I don't think you're you you probably potentially scraping into the top five in 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 best players in the NHL. I, I so think, how I think can you demand that money? I, I think people overrate mm. Gosh's. I know Matthews has gotten better um, defensively. Uh, I think he was for forwards the league leader in block shots, um, and just his defensive work has gotten better. I wouldn't like he's mm. he might start playing PK, possibly, um, just because it's getting better. But Mana's already playing PK, you know. Mana's like mm. for a Matthews to thrive, they kind of need that Mana, that that silky passing player to then give them that space, and then they just have that shot. Um, and so I think a lot of things can come down to, you know, the minor situation as well in regards to how many points he puts up. Uh, I just, I value personally minor more than Matthews as a player if I was to be drafting to fill out my team. And that's just, <clears throat> and like you got to look at, like, this contract, it, it doesn't just hurt the salary cap side of things. It hurts, like, you know, team cap, um, the teams take players taking team friendly deals. It's just, yep. It, it sends that mentality well, of like, hey, we're here for money, not the cup. Um, that's why mm. we're, in the, we're in the biggest organization to get more exposure, so then I can do some more merchandise. Like, it, yeah. It just, you imagine what Matthews? If Matthews takes eleven million at four years, you imagine what Nylander takes because he'd be like, okay. Yeah. Matthews took less than what his last contract was. Okay. Well, yeah, look, I had a pretty team friendly deal at 6.9 for what I did. Um, maybe I'll take a little increase. Maybe I'll get to 8 mil. All of a sudden, you know, he gives a $2 million um, uh, discount on his contract. Mitch Marner comes up and goes, Do you know what? You took an $11 million contract. I'll take an $11 million contract. Okay. Awesome. We got a we got a reasonable deal for Mitch Marner. We got a reasonable deal for Matthews. We got a reasonable deal for Nylander. All of a sudden, you're looking at it and going, "Okay, we've paid thirty mil for three three top tier players, but the cap's going up." All of a sudden, that those three contracts look really solid. 
but now he's taken he's taken 13.25 Mitch Marner when he comes up I can't see Mitch Marner taking any less than 12 and a half and I, I can't say, see Nylander taking well yeah but I'm saying minimum I, I can't I, I know, see exactly. Marner taking less than 12 and a half I can't see Nylander taking less than probably nine and a half like I, I think Nylander's going to look for, be looking for ten plus, and you know you can argue whether or not he's worth it. And if you want in the comments below, let us know if you think Nylander's worth ten million plus. But with the numbers he's put up the last two seasons and the salary cap going up, that is in reality probably what he's going to be asking for. Whether he gets it with Toronto or whether he has to be traded out to get that, it, it, you know, it, it, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But this is what signing these sort of contracts does to a franchise. It, it, it really straps you for cash. You, you see the, saw the example when Tavares signs for 11 mil, Matthews 11.6, Mana 10.9. All of a sudden, you've got three players signing for ridiculous contracts when they sign them. Um, and it's hurt them since because they had so much cash strapped up in just those three players. Um, they haven't been able to do a lot since. So, yeah, that's my biggest biggest concern with them at the moment is they've got a good enough team to make the playoffs. They've got a team that could potentially go the distance, but it's just, I don't know. I, don't, I feel I don't like think they, they have a leadership something. group for it. Like, you don't have that Bergeron mm. where it's like, I've taken a salary cap, I'm going to lead the way. Um, you know, I'm just a genuinely amazing guy off the ice, um, as well as on the ice. Like, mm. let, like I look at a lot of the teams that are competing, and I, you can probably list one, two, three people that you're like, that guy's going to help lead them. That guy's a leader, and um, I don't see mm. a le I don't see a leader here. I think um, the whole Toronto situation's got into the brain of a lot of these players um, to the point where they're possibly not even looking at cups anymore. They're just looking at money, and mm. I understand how it can be taxing and stuff, but yeah, there is just no that Bergeron. There's no um, Nico Hisha or Jack Hughes, someone like that could just fully lead and just has a good brain on um, brain mentality wise uh, and leadership wise. And uh, I just can't see how they're going to push further in the playoffs when you need that type of player, when you need people to stand up and mm. rally people when they're down. Um, you know, off the topic yeah. of like the well, core, you know, core four, we probably could should cover a couple other areas like um, like they bring in Petuzzi and Domi, uh, great goal scorers and stuff, but like they haven't brought in any defensive side of things. Um, they bring in Reeves who doesn't do anything mm -hmm. just hockey wise. He's just a a fisticuffs. Um, it's just a thug. He's just a thug. It's an overpaid, yeah. overpaid player. Um, basically replacing Wayne Simmons, and he only played 18, 18 games last year. So. It, 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 I, I don't see where they're getting the defensive side of stuff any um, anymore. Like, you're really relying on Matthews to step it up again um, and Marner, Marner to keep doing what he's doing. But, you know, you, you're losing mm -hmm. uh, Achari, Bunting, Kerfoot, um, uh, O'Reilly, like, all, all those players. Like, I just... I think they'd be getting even more top-heavy in regards to goal scoring side of things and I don't see um defensive side of things uh stepping up um to replace that. And just one other note, mm -hmm. I know that yeah. young young uh, Coke, young Coke was signed yeah, no, I agree by yeah. Tree Living um at Calgary, so now he's got him uh for a full season instead of just sixteen, seventeen games plus playoffs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um yeah, it'll be interesting to see what they're able to do. I mean, the 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 other the one last note I'll I'll go on the on the Matthews contract. Austin Matthews had forty goals last season, albeit they say he was injured. He had sixty goals the year before, eighty five points in seventy four games, and he signs for thirteen point two five. And this is after David Parsonak. Puts up yeah. 61 goals, 113 points in what was just a unbelievable season. And he signs 
for $11.25 million over eight years. So not only do they get term, they get probably a discounted rate when you look at the Austin Matthews contract. It's it's just that that's the sort of thing that, that where I get my gripe because you know Pastor's only two years older than than Matthews, so there's a there's a little age gap there. Well, actually, sorry, he's only a year. He's a year and three months old, a year and four months older. So he's not overly that. It, it, there's not a big age difference. Pastor just put up sixty one goals for crying out loud, and he. Signed for two million dollars less. I think the only difference like that's is, uh, just one, one place right there. And... That's the difference. Yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> I, it's like I is, is two million yeah. worth a center over a winger when um the winger does does that. That it, it's a great thing to bring up. Yeah. Um, I think the core four. This is the problem: is how much we've talked about the core four compared to any other team that mm-hmm. we've covered so far. Is that We've covered the team, and not just like oh, it's these these mm-hmm. certain players that are ruining the team. But it just seems to be the case. And obviously, these players mm-hmm. become, then sign no trade clauses and all that type of stuff. So you can't bail out. Um, I knew Matthews was going to get paid once Jubas left. Um, because I knew whoever replaced him, Tree Living or whoever, was always going to sign Matthews. Um, to mm-hmm. basically the maximum. Oh, they they, they had to. I know, I know Matthews wanted three years and probably he probably wanted more like fifteen. Um, I don't know, but I could see that would be the case. And then they negotiated down to four to thirteen. But um, I, I everyone's like, oh, you know, this is what you do for the top five top best players in the league. Um, and it, I, my 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 thought process is not it's not. <laughs> You're the GM. You the Ooh. ball's in your court. Like, hey man, if you don't listen to what I'm saying you walk like i i will build without mm. you because once you let players I'll, like I'll, this, I'll trade you, you. Oh. yeah i know he had a like, yeah, no I'll, I'll trade you like but yeah exactly just yeah but like the, you know you can turn around and say look can you can you move your name no, no move cause if he says no okay cool no worries and then um, you stay playing you just, we I, won't I, move I, you that's you fine I, you just sit him as a healthy scratch all season Exactly, but um, this is another thing. You want you want to talk about centers, right? Like you just said, difference between Pastor and, and Matthews is Pastor's a, a winger. Matthews is I don't think that it makes a little bit of a difference, but not too oh, many. No, I'm just saying that's the only difference. Did, but, did. Yeah. but the uh, the other one you can compare to, who signed a contract um, at the beginning of this season, uh, Nathan McKinnon. Twelve point six million dollars after winning the cup. He's yeah after winning the cup. And do you know what he did this season? He put up a hundred and eleven points. And he missed hundred eleven points, forty two goals, and he missed he missed eleven games. Yes, eleven games, and that's so he's got a cup now. He put up one hundred eleven points, and he's taken twelve point six mil. So I know that's only about six hundred and twenty. Five or six hundred something thousand dollars less than what Matthews took, but for me, McKinnon's better than Matthews. I, I rate every him day higher day, every than Matthews, day. but but also he took eight years, so he's got term. This is the qualm I had with the thirteen point two five. If he took it, if it was thirteen point two five of eight years, I'd probably not have an issue with it. I'd be like, oh, you might see that come to like you might actually see that contract being well worth it in the back end. Um, but by the time that contract might be becoming worth it, he's up for negotiation <laughs> for a new one. So, yeah, it's just, yeah, I don't, I, I, it, it falls down on that because I honestly think that there signed the, the death warrant to them winning a cup. I, with this team, I personally I, I just, see him I, winning a cup mm. over the next four years with that Matthews contract, and then obviously you got a whole rebuild. I, I, I feel like it's a horrible ten years coming for Toronto fans. Mm-hmm. I don't think this and, team and it's already been better. a horrible. 
Like, the houses Many been years. better than last year's. Like, they sold the farm to go for it. It's so, not. So, so what are you going to do when the, 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 dead ca the deadline happens? You're going to sell the farm again. If you already have no second round picks for the next three years, you traded your 2025th first round, um, top 10 protected. So you, you start, you, you're basically halfway through, if not more half, um, than halfway through uh, your future prospects, um, draft, draft pick wise, um, for the next three years. Like, how much more do you trade? And are you, you're going to go Florida side of things and just trade all your firsts? Um, there you got the, what, the 27th. Uh, worst prospect pool um, as per athletic so there's nothing really coming up I know they're expecting knees to come up who was a second rounder a few years ago um, uh -huh. but yeah then after that like like where's your cheap you know entry ELC contracts um, I just don't see it you know you got Giordano on 800,000 he's very solid serviceable defenseman but he's aging obviously on another one year once he goes, like, how are you replacing that 800,000 contract for what he does, um, being that very service mm -hmm. defender? So, I, I just don't, I think there's too many holes. Um, I, I'm not sure how g good of a GM that Tree Living will be to be able to work in this situation. Because I think... Plus, they got to move. They've got to move someone else as well. Yeah. Like, that's what... And, and they have to Ultimately. And, yeah. and the thing is, is the only, the only one who will make them cap compliant before the season starts, Max Domi. But you're not trading out someone that you just signed. No, nah, he's not like, going. Like He's could, he's not going. It could only be yeah. Nealander, Brody, Riley, um, or Samsonov. But obviously Samsonov is your number one um, this year, so you can't, you can't trade him. Um, if you're trading Riley or Brody, then your decor just falls apart again. <laughs> you, well, exactly. You have, like, you have you, no he, so, you, yeah. I, it, it almost has to be Nealander, um, unless something crazy happens with like a Tavares or something like that. Like, or, um, if it's Nealander, you've got to get something now in return. So you've got to get a player that's going to. Hey, if anyone's trading for Nealander, it, that's not a contender. It's going to be a trade and sign. Because there's no way that anyone's paying for Nylander on on a whims that he might sign with them, um, which makes it harder for him to move. But also, it's like, well, if you lose Nylander, you're losing a point per game player. Mm. You're losing a a top six winger. You you can't just lose a player like that and then just think everything's going to be dandy because this team becomes even worse. So. You, in that trade, it's not just getting draft picks and, and prospects. It's it, you've got to actually get a player in return that is that is game ready now, yeah. but he just costs less than Nylander. So, and I don't know too many players in the league that you're going to get for less than Nylander's contract. That is well, as that good as Nylander. That provides what he does. Like now, you're going to have to exactly. give up uh, Nylander, get a player or two. And hope they hopefully they outperform their contract, or they are role-minded people. So you, they're, you know, like a defensive forward that purely uh, purely defensive and does PK or something like that. Um, clearly, out of the two, the PK was the one that needed to be improved the most um, compared to the mm -hmm. power play. Obviously, it wasn't a bad. But even that was solid. Yeah, it <laughs> wasn't a bad PK, but they lose so much that I think their um, their PK gets thrown up a little bit. Uh, because of what they've lost, um, mm. I know you still got mana um, and whatnot that can that will still be on it. But yeah, I, I I also worry for this team if any of those core four and I'm I'm honestly going to include Batuzzi and stuff like that in it as well. Any of those get injured, there's no one to step up. Um, mm. I, I don't see someone that can take up a little bit of that production. Uh, like. Reeves will never do that. <laughs> he doesn't have the skill or anything, so that that's pretty mm -hmm. uh, fisticuffs role that he's got there. And I don't even I don't, I don't get why because I don't feel like they need that. Um, I, mm. feel, I feel like with the roster they have, they just need more. Like they got the offense, you just need that defense. Um, 
and then you, then your sounds, but it, that's that just seems to be what it's like that that and that and leadership. Um, and I know Reeves can provide a little bit of that, but yeah, I've got a lot of concerns. Um, Martin Jones as a as a third goalie uh, doesn't overwhelm me with confidence. Um, and so you got to hope that Joseph Wall is is, is ready. Is, is real deal. Like you know, it's not a yeah. He, even as a back, he's, even as a backup, like he's gonna play thirty-ish games, mm. so he's got to be ready. And he and he's got to he. Yep, he played seven games, seven relatively good games last year, but seven good games versus thirty is is a lot different. Um, you know, can he provide them with those with, with thirty solid games? Mm. Um, this is a big question, and if not. Can Martin Jones come in and provide that? Because he was less than nine hundred at the Seattle Kraken, um, who have a pretty good defensive structure in front of him. Um, probably yeah, a much better he's, defensive he's structure than this. <laughs> like, no, I, exactly. I so, like, I, you can yeah. argue if their decor gets a little bit better with Klingberg added and Hole leaving. Hole was good statistically. But like, mm. uh, just through he made some just through your eye horrible lines, mistakes. Um, watching the you know the eye shot, he, like when he makes a mistake, it's a howler, and so it, mm-hmm. stand, it stands out um, compared to a lot of other defenders. And I think or a that, that, that that was in his uh, detriment. So it, it's um yeah, I could probably say the decor gets a little bit better. You could argue, um, but I feel like Bertuzzi is a great ad. But they've already got so much firepower. Like, how much more firepower do you need? Same with Domi. Mm. Like, Domi's cheap firepower, but how much more do you need? It, like, it's still top heavy. That's it, that's it, one yeah. of the big issues as well. You know, how good's their bottom six gonna be? Is it gonna be good enough to to do what they need? Um, I agree. The I don't even think Ryan Reeves should be in the team. Um, don't know, let alone why they picked him up. Um, Especially for this yeah, cap situation, it's... it doesn't really make mm. sense um, overall. Yeah, I mean, surely you can fill in someone on a you know league minimum, mm. um, eight hundred and something thousand dollar contract saves you a little bit. At least you you'll be closer to that. Um, you yep. know. The other thing I did want to mention is um, <laughs> out of those notable losses, <clears throat> it does really seem that the Metro has really um, pick pick this team apart, like. Uh, Two to Pittsburgh, um, one to Carolina, Carolina. two to New York Rangers, one to New Jersey, one to Philly. Um, you got one to Arizona, Detroit, and two to Nashville going to the um, mm-hmm. west, though Detroit being in the Atlantic in the east. Obviously, uh, Jordy Ben looking at play, um, professional tryouts at Dallas with his brother. And then Aston Reese and Simmons are still at UFAs. Um, so it looks like the Metro, as strong as it is, really siphoned a lot from this team that they um and took advantage mm. of this team. And you look at which which doesn't help these guys either. No. Like they yeah. become probably weaker whilst a lot of the East are getting stronger around them. So yeah. That, that's yeah. I just wanted to mention that all all of their key, a lot of the key players from last year that was helping them are now going to be helping a lot of the Metro and um when they go into the playoffs, I can see uh, one of these players um, being one, some some sort of key in regards to kicking them out if they end up going against any Metro team. Um, I, thought mm. I, I thought I was just going to mention that. Oh, I don't know what, m- more to say on this team because it it really is... like I don't understand how, as a fan, you'd be like, yes, we signed Matthews because... Everyone I've seen just be like, "Yeah, we we kept him," and I'm like, "Well, is that is that mm. your, is that your goal? Is just keeping the star player, or is it winning the cup?" Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. It was yeah. It uh, was interesting, interesting watching a lot of people's reactions. <clears throat> mm. You know, oh yeah, we kept Matthews, so I'm really really happy. But oh, that contract, and it's like, I just I don't I don't know if that's the right way to be like. Yeah, I get it. You love Matthews. He's he's a superstar. He what he's done in his career so far has been fantastic. But like ultimately, 
you're in it to win the Stanley Cup. You're in it to win that ultimate glory. And is one player worth that, um, you know, worth throwing that away for? You know, like 13.25 mil is probably, you're probably not going to see a team win a cup with a contract like that on their team. Um, not for uh, and more than four years. Like so does that mean, years. yes, exactly. So does that mean we've just, that, you know, Toronto has just signed um, a no winning the cup for four years. Yeah. Uh, well, and that's, that's, what I feel like. that's what I feel like. Ultimately, I feel like, you know, if, if Arizona really wanted him and all the rest of that stuff about him going home, I almost would have taken some of Arizona's young prospects and um, up and coming players and, and sort of moved him on because you probably could have stayed cup contender competitive um, whilst sort of not mortgaging your future whilst trading him out. Yeah. And if you got him to waive his clause, it. 100%, I would have traded him. Hmm. Um, I just. Because I get you, that you can pick up like a local yeah. goalie or something from Arizona. They, I'm pretty sure they would have done that. And yeah, I, like I feel like you could still make um, a playoff uh, slash cup contender without Matthews, mm-hmm. with the detriment in regards to draft picks you already have missing. Um, well, you're, you're not just getting Cooley, are you? Like well, you exactly. look at it, you're, you're probably you're, getting... You're getting other stuff. But mm. if he, if he didn't. My question to you is: Would you have let him walk and got, instead of signing this contract? What, what, or I, would you have let him walk? Letting him walk is a tough one, but I just I I I it it is really tough, isn't it? Because if you let him walk, you probably get a cut for the next four years <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, I think I think you got to let him walk and change. I mean, change your um, for the, like your culture. Like it's it's not just about that yeah. year or the cup. It's about setting a tone to everyone. Yeah, like we're set serious, the example. We're a serious team. Yeah. And I know if you're a general manager and you did that, you'd probably get fired from the owners. Um, so it's it like you got to take that into account. Be but, cool. but if you had the ability without getting fired, you're in that position. I probably would have let him walk, uh, walk because mm. um, I just feel like it's better for the team. I I feel like I can, you know, I'd rather go and like try and go to Bergeron like, hey, come out of retirement for one year. I'll give you eleven mil. <laughs> I'll give mm. you Matthew's contract for one year if you want, <laughs> just to to, win, to try and win a yeah. cup. And I feel like I'd have a better chance with him than I would with Matthews. Um, so. That, that, that's just, that's Especially just, with that leadership, well, you know, I, I I, like that's, that's, that's my big question. Missing. I know Reeves brings. Yeah, that's up, my. Yeah. My question with Matthews is that leadership is is his. I mean, obviously, we don't know. We we don't get to see inside the locker room and all the rest of that. But I, this sort of thing does have to put. It does put his leadership and his um, I guess goals. His say. thought process, yeah, and like. What what does he want out of his career? It does does sort of put some questions around that, which you know, if, if the outsider questioning his you know reasoning for doing these sort of things, taking these these um, contracts, you've got to think that the outside noise gets inside, and then that resonates with some of the players, and some of the players go, oh, "Is he in it for the right reasons?" and then all of a sudden that can trickle down, which, you know, leads to internal fighting and, and all the rest of that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we already seen it when Mitch Marner was up for a contract renewal and oh, I think his dad came out and a couple other things saying, you know, he should be the captain and all the rest of this stuff. So there's there's obviously that those egos um, within the organisation, especially with someone like Matthews, um, and I just feel like that can create cancer within the locker room, which ultimately yeah. leads to the it, team not it, playing as a, a team. difference between confidence and ego, um, in my mm. opinion, like a really big difference. I think, um, oh, geez, I forget his name. The, uh, the, the star from Anaheim. I'm really forgetting his name right now. 
but he's got a oh really, Zegris. Yeah, Zegris. He's got a really big ego. Um, I was listening mm. to Ryan Strome talk about it just a little bit on a podcast, and um, how he was saying he's flirts with the line. But to me, that sounds like a player calling him out just a little bit. That um, he's mm. a little bit, little bit immature, and um, mm. that can hurt a player. And once you grow out of that, um, and I don't think that Matthews completely grown out of that. I think um, he's very. I don't want to say entitled or something. Like, sure, you want to chase the money, but how much f you money um, do you really need? Because it's not f you mm. money; it's f everyone money at that point. Like, these yeah, guys, these guys are getting f everyone money. So, um, oh, I, I, I've said it to I, you many I, times. Like, yeah. you, 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 me. I think many, many other people in his position. Like, when you're earning that amount of money, like your life set up anyway, no matter what, like you've earned so much money and you are earning so much money that taking a $3 million, you know, even a $10 million contract to Matthews is a lot of money. Like you, you go eight by 10, that's still $80 million, not including your performance bonuses, not including your endorsement bonus, like, not including any of that, it's still eighty million dollars over eight years, which is a ridiculous amount of money. But like, do you really want to take the extra, uh, you know, three mil, twenty four million dollars over eight years instead of two, three cup rings, maybe one cup ring? Like, mm. how much is that Stanley Cup worth, right? Like, for me, every day of the week, I take it. I take that two, three million dollar pay cut. Mm. For, for a ring any day of the week and well, it does just yeah, yeah question it well exactly yeah. how much is a cup worth here um and how much is that legacy worth here you build a legacy from mm. it as well people remember your name honestly if matthews doesn't win a cup i honestly you'll remember his name a little bit just because how good he was at goal scoring and stuff but at the end of the day you'll be like oh it's that matthews guy that cost toronto <laughs> for x amount of years mm. like that's how he'll be remembered so what do you want to be known for right yeah it's like yeah what do you want to be known for um what is your legacy what are, what are you trying to build and you know i guess we we can start wrapping it up here um there's, there's a lot of points i'd love to talk about in toronto i think it's a, a very interesting team uh management wise and what they've done uh selling draft picks you know tree living had his work cut out when he came in i don't know how good or bad of a job he's done I think Batuzzi and Domi additions are great. Reeves, eh. Um, and then losing. I would have liked to have kept O'Reilly. I know it was really, really, really difficult too, but I feel like that was a key if you're going for a cup. Mm. But Imagine him on your third line center. Yeah. That's absolutely monstrous. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, hopefully they can prove us wrong. Hopefully they go deeper into the playoffs this year, um, get to a conference final. Uh, finally, then hopefully even further, but it doesn't look over promising with the Matthews contract, with the Nealander situation. The fact they're still going to make moves, and yeah, let us know what you guys think um, on what move will be made, and is it going to make them better? Is it going to make them worse? And yeah, where do you think they're going to finish in the end of the season? Do they even make the cup with how strong that um? Um, the playoffs with how strong that division is. It could be one of those seasons where uh, everything gets flipped upside down. But yeah. Mm, and can they win the cup with this team? Yeah, I guess can. that's the that's the other question. Can they go all the way? Can they go all the way? Mm. Um, me personally, no. Too many questions about goaltending and other things. But yes, we'll leave it there. Leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel for more content uh, covering all 32 teams and other news and whatnot and don't forget to leave a comment below and what you think and until next video we'll catch you later guys see you guys